Welcome to our Sunday morning service online. We're really blessed that we have this type of technology that we can record the service and we can all join in together, even though we may not be able to be here in person, in church because of the weather, we can still join together and worship the Lord. Just a few announcements for you today. The first one, um, is we just want to welcome Pastor Rick back with us as he's going to be leading us today in our online worship. And we also have Lori with us who's playing the organ and piano with us. So we had a lot of things planned for Sunday morning. We had our annual meeting, we had the Common Ground Contemporary Worship pop-up party, and we also had the previewing of FPC's mementos. So we are going to move that to next Sunday, February 6th, the same as we were going to do this week, but just one week later. So that gives us something to look forward to to next Sunday. Our Bible study on Tuesday mornings, we're going to be starting a new session. We're going to study the book of Mark. So if you are interested, you can reach out to me or you can just join us here at the church at 1030. And let's not forget, remember last week I reminded you about Valentine's Day, so the very day before is also an important day to remember. February 13th, our traditional service is moving from the 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. So just keep your eyes open, we'll be sending out more reminders, but February 13th we will be at 10.30 a.m. So with that all, let us join together in our call to worship. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. Let us worship God together. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Here am I, all of me. Take my life, it's all for thee. And let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee Take my silver and my gold Not of mine would I withhold Take my and use every power as you choose. Here am I, all of me. Take my life, it's all for thee. shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At your feet it's treasure store. 
take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Here am I, all of me. Take my life, it's all for thee. Here am I, all for thee. Take my life, it's all for thee. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Let us enter into a time of confession. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weaknesses since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. And I encourage you all at home to join in in our prayer of confession. Lord, we often fall short we want to be first, but you call us to be last. We want to be great, but we ignore your call for something deeper. We confess our selfishness when we overlook the needs of others and instead focus on our own desires. Forgive us for our pride and wanting to avoid any difficulties. Teach us how to serve obediently and according to your wishes. Let us take a moment to silently confess our sins. The Lord does not treat us as our sin deserves or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. Amen.
My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Is in grace The Lord has promised good to me His word my hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as life endures My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing toils and snares we have already come t'was grace that brought us safe thus far and grace will lead us home when we've been there ten thousand Bright shining as the sun We've no less days To sing God's praise Than when we first begun We've no less days To sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. We stand today before the Lord with gratitude and thankfulness, praise, thanksgiving, because indeed the Lord's grace is amazing. It's that grace that we need it's that grace that changes everything and so i pray this morning that as you're sitting in your home that you would just allow the grace of the lord jesus christ to wash over you and to fill you this morning's message is called grace and mission and we are in week three of our jonah sermon series and it's week three and we are going to go through Jonah chapter three this morning listen now for the word of God proclaimed Jonah chapter 2 verse 10 through Jonah 3 verse 10 and if you know anything about the book of Jonah you know this part and the Lord commanded the fish the whale, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. 
Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. And here's the miracle. Verse 5. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed. And all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. The word of the Lord made the king get off his throne. Verse 7, this is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. This is the word of the Lord. I asked my neighbor, how was Myrtle Beach? And he said it was great, except for our scare. And I asked, what scare? He explained how one day at the beach, they had lost their four-year-old son. And his name is JJ. He and his wife were enjoying a day at the beach, and all of a sudden they both realized that they had not seen their son, and they couldn't remember the last time they saw their boy. And of course, mom and dad went into a panic and a frantic search for their boy, JJ. They began calling out, JJ, JJ, JJ. Not seeing JJ, the boy's dad checked the water. Thank God he, he didn't see him in the water. And the fellow beachgoers noticed the, the panic in mom and dad's eyes and they heard their call for their lost son. And so they joined in the search. They started looking for JJ and calling for JJ and asking, has anyone seen JJ? For these young parents, it was about a 15 to 20 minute ordeal, but JJ's dad told me that it felt like months. And they finally found JJ on the boardwalk and JJ was happy and calm and they were relieved. And they hugged their boy, they kissed their boy, they welcomed their boy back into their arms. JJ had wandered away. JJ had perhaps unknowingly, unintentionally run away. And mom and dad looked for their boy. Mom and dad called for their boy by name. Mom and dad enlisted help to find their boy and they would not give up until they were able to welcome their boy back into their arms. You know, this story is similar to the entire storyline of the Bible. Beginning with Adam and Eve, people wander away, run away, even hide from God. And God, who is love, God, the perfect heavenly parent, 
does what any loving parent would do. The Lord runs after his lost children. The the Lord calls us by name. The Lord sends his son to seek and save the lost. In God's enduring, relentless, eternal love, the Lord doesn't stop pursuing us until he finds us and welcomes us into his arms. Jonah is the story of a runaway son. In Jonah 1, God commissions Jonah to go to Nineveh, modern day Iraq, and preach against it. And if you've been with us the last two weeks, you know what happens. Jonah boards a ship and he goes in the opposite direction. He sails away from the presence of the Lord. He runs away. A violent storm comes upon the sea and Jonah is thrown overboard. And if you know anything about Jonah, you know again what happens next. God appoints a huge fish, a whale, to seek, swallow, and save his lost son. Jonah was lost, and now he's found. Jonah was blind, and now he sees. Jonah was perishing, and now he's been saved by the amazing grace of the Lord. Maybe you've drifted away from the Lord. Others haven't noticed, but but you noticed. God seems far. You you no no longer seek after or serve the Lord the way that you used to. Maybe you've been hurt by the church, and as a result, you've said, I want nothing to do with God. And the question is for those who find themselves wandering, running, or, or hiding from the Lord. What, what does the Lord say to the runaway? What does the Lord do with the wanderer? And to help answer those questions, I want to tell you a story about a son of Jonah from the New Testament. He's a son of a, a different Jonah. You know the story of Jesus' passion. After Jesus' Last Supper, he was arrested. And one of his disciples was named Simon, son of Jonah. Jesus gave him the name Peter because Jesus saw him as the rock. And while Jesus was on trial, Peter waited in the courtyard And in the courtyard, Peter was asked three times if he was one of Jesus' followers. Do you belong to Jesus of Nazareth? And three times, Peter denied it. And I would just invite you to think about this. As Peter, running away from the Lord, verbally and publicly, and after Jesus' death and resurrection, In the Gospel of John, chapter 21, Peter the fisherman went back fishing on the same old lake. And he was out fishing all night, which leads us to believe that he was perhaps contemplating returning to his life as a fisherman. The life that Christ had called him away to, to be his follower. And like Jonah, This son of Jonah was lost at sea, and Jesus appears on the shoreline where Peter can barely see him from the sea. And Jesus speaks to the runaway. Jesus asks him three times. Jesus gets right to the point with this question. Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? I know you've been wandering, but but do you love me? I know that you're thinking about running, but do you love me? And it cuts to the heart of Peter, and he says, yes. You, You know I love you, Lord. And Jesus speaks these words to this wanderer, this one who was contemplating running away. He says these two words, and these were the two words that the the Lord spoke to Peter during their first encounter on the same lake. And the words were, follow me. Peter, (laughs) 
In your wandering, your doubting, your running, God hasn't changed his calling upon your life. For us who are doubting, perhaps wandering and running, the will of the Lord still stands for your life. God hasn't changed. God's word upon your life and his will and his purpose hasn't changed. Your calling still stands. Follow me. I'm making you the lead pastor of this new church movement that will change the world. You'll be a preacher, a healer, a disciple maker. I'm even going to use you to write the Bible. And we wonder in our sin because sin makes us feel shame. Does God still want anything to do with me? And the Lord says today, follow me. We ask in our, in our wandering, am I still able, worthy, called to be who the Lord has called me to be? And the Lord says, follow me. Do I get another chance? And another, and another. And the Lord says, follow me. You're, you're not a fisherman. You're a fisher of men. My will still stands. And so God gives Simon Peter, son of Jonah, another chance. God gives Jonah another chance. And God gives you and I another chance. And I'm here today as your pastor because God has given me another and another and another chance. And, and I would bet that, that both Pastor Liz and Pastor Rick would say that they're here today in the sanctuary giving worship to God because God has given them another and another and another chance. You're here listening perhaps as part of this faith community because God has given you another chance. You have experienced the love, the mercy, the grace of God. And Jesus says to us those two words, follow me. And so the question becomes, how do we follow Christ? And here's part of what it means to follow Christ for every Christian in every place for all time. In Jonah 3, Jonah is chosen, called, found, and saved by the Lord. And in verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, right here's the second chance, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach it, the message that I tell you. And it's the same word of the Lord that God gave to Jonah in chapter 1. Go to Nineveh and preach against it. God has not changed. God's purpose for Jonah's life has not changed. Nineveh has not changed. And in verses 3 and 4, we see that the second time Jonah's response is different. He doesn't run away. Verse 3, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. We, we think it was about 120,000 people, which is a large city in ancient days. It took three days to, to walk through it. And Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, preaching, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. God didn't send Jonah to Nineveh to be a good person. God didn't send Jonah to Nineveh to say, and say, be, be agreeable, be polite. Jonah, just go up to Nineveh, they're, they're, they're evil and wicked. Be a good example. Live a godly life and, and over time, people will see your godly life and your good example and eventually they'll come around and in due time, they'll turn to the Lord. It's not what the Lord says. When, when the Lord says to Jonah, follow me, when the Lord says to Peter, follow me, when the Lord says to us, follow me, what that means, part of what that means for every Christian in every place at all times is, I want you to preach. Someone just woke up at home. Preach. This is how Christ said it to the church in Acts 1 to his followers. You will be my witness is 
and, and you say, I don't, you know, I don't like this, this message, the pastor's being a little too abrasive in my face. My task is to tell you what the Lord has told you. That's it. And what the Lord says in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, to those who will follow him is preach. And you say, but preaching is for preachers in robes on Sunday mornings from pulpits who went to seminary, trained to preach the word of the Lord. Here's what preaching means. Verbally communicate the gospel. And here's why our calling, our response to God's grace includes verbally communicating the gospel to other people. Preaching is God's primary way of reaching lost people. See, God could write scriptures in the sunset. He doesn't. God could appear with angelic armies proclaiming his word. He isn't. God could speak again through a burning bush, but he hasn't done that for a while. God chooses to speak to people through people. God chooses to spread his truth and grace through those who have received his truth and amazing grace. Now I'm going to make you feel a little bit better. Most of you have not been called to preach from a pulpit so you can breathe a sigh of relief. You've been called to preach in the places where Jesus and Jesus' disciples went preaching. Jesus preached in homes, from boats, in marketplaces, and on mountaintops. His disciples are sent to preach, and they went town to town. They preached in public squares, in prisons, in courthouses, in homes. They preached in the ordinary places, ordinary people live, work, and play. Your call, my call to preach, extends beyond the pulpit to the places where we live and work and play. We communicate the gospel, not simply in a church setting, but we use the tools that God has given us. We use email. We can communicate the gospel through a tweet, in conversations at home, through Facebook, and in the marketplace. When the pandemic started, we were encouraged to have a bubble, right? It was the first time I ever asked anyone, who's in your bubble, right? It's that group of people that we do life with. The bubble, the fishbowl, your sphere of influence is where you are called to verbally communicate the message of Christ. If you've experienced the love of God, if you've been impacted by the grace of God, if you know the truth of the gospel, God wants others to hear his message through you. You say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. God gave Jonah five Hebrew words to preach to Nineveh. We, we read it in English as 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. And in Hebrew, these five words, I think this is closer. God is coming with fire. It's all he had was five words, but they were five words from the Lord. And Jonah delivers them. When I was, I was a kid, we had people deliver newspapers to our house. Am I old or what? And the delivery boy didn't edit the news. The, the newspaper delivery boy didn't change the news. He didn't give his opinion about the news. He just delivered the newspaper and went to the next house. What we did with the paper, whether we read it or used it in the fireplace, was none of his business. His job simply was to deliver the news. And that was Jonah's approach. He walked around for an entire day and preached the word that God gave him, and he left the results to God. He delivered the message, and God radically changed Nineveh. The word of the Lord has the power to change people. We don't. The deliverer doesn't have the power to change people, but the word of the Lord does. The word of the Lord has power to change families. The word of the Lord has power to change cities and countries. And we see that in the scripture. The whole city repents. The whole city says, Lord, we are sorry. 
don't treat us the way that we've been treating others. We've been wicked and evil. And it's not just the things we've done, it's, it's the thoughts and, of, of our hearts. It's, it's our nature, it's within us. Maybe the Lord will have mercy. And God forgives ruthless, violent, wicked, lost Nineveh. And 120,000 people experience the love of God. These pagans experience the mercy of the Lord. From the king to the commoners, they experience the grace of God. But God didn't bring this salvation, this, this word of salvation alone. He sent Jonah to preach. I wonder what would happen if, if we shared the message God has given us to share. I wonder what God could do through you, through our church, if we opened our mouths and delivered the good news where we live through the platforms God has given us. I wonder if there's someone in your life right now who God wants you to share his message with today or this week. Like Jonah, we are each one sinner saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ who came to seek and save the lost. And like Jonah, through one sinner, God intends to produce the salvation of many. The Lord, the perfect parent, the loving and gracious one, will not rest until those who are wandering, running, hiding far from him are welcomed back into the family of God. Arise and go to Nineveh and preach the message God has given to you, to me, and to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord and it will preach. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, I think of the words before us today. The invitation to receive your grace and your salvation. To know that you are the God who loves us. No matter how far we've run. That you tell us to, to turn back, to repent. As you call to Nineveh, you call to us who, who are far. Say, repent, turn. Salvation belongs to the Lord that Christ Jesus has come to seek and save the lost. So Lord, we pray that those who are far would turn to you now in faith and receive Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. And God, I think of the words above my son's bed that say, be strong and courageous. And so Lord, as you have called us to preach, to share this life-changing, eternity-altering message of grace and salvation, that we would be strong and courageous, that we would not be silent when you have called us to shout from the rooftops. So use us, Lord, as you have used Jonah to share what we have received, the amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, we lift up those who are in the hospital and those who have been recently discharged from the hospital. We lift up again to you, Dee Coover. We pray for her recovery. We thank you for Nancy Murray's discharge from the hospital and her recovery and healing. We especially lift up to you on this day, the Lindsay family, who's grieving the loss of John's brother, Bill. We pray that they would be surrounded by your comfort and your peace, that they would, Lord, be quickened by the promises of God. And Lord, we pray the prayer now that you taught us to pray by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
let us enter into a time of offering. Lord, may we never forget the good things you do for us. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank you for healing diseases. Thank you for your love and tender mercies. Thank you for redeeming us from death. We offer our gifts in grateful response. And since this week that you are home, there will be offering plates next week, but you're welcome to make a gift online or write a check and put it in the mail. Let us all give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Now being at home, we invite you to join with us as we sing our doxology. As we celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and remember our calling to follow him and to share that news, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all on this day and forevermore. Amen and amen.